Hi folks, welcome to the tutorial video for A Game of Thrones Hand of the King. Uh, this is a game designed for two to four players by Bruno Catala, and the version that I have here is published by Fantasy Fight Games. Uh, in this game, you're basically playing uh, with a tableau where you're moving your main guy around with the objective of capturing different cards, uh, and at the end of the day, hoping to capture banners for these different families, and the player with the most banners wins at the end of the game. So let's quickly start by looking at the setup, and then we'll have a look at the turn-by-turn -turn structure uh, and what your endgame conditions are, and we'll cover the variance at the end of the game as well, because the game comes with a few of these uh, inside the box. So let's start by looking at uh, how the setup uh, for the game works, and then we'll go into what uh, the turn structure looks like. So the game comes with these different character cards that are laid out here. Uh, 35 of these cards will belong to one of the different families or clans in the game, uh, except, uh, and then you will have one extra card, which is uh, the Varys card right over here. The Varys does not belong to any one particular clan, uh, but when you're setting up the game, you will shuffle Varys along with the other 35 cards uh, and set it. So you're going to have 36 cards in total, and you're going to set it up in a six by six grid uh, randomly in your play area. And then you will end up with something like this. You will take the different banners uh, that you're playing for uh, in the game and put them to the side. There is seven of these. Uh, so these are going to be to the side of the uh, table. These tokens are used in a variant that you can play with. So we'll come to these at the very end. For now, we're uh, just going to ignore this for the purposes of the standard game. And then there are different companion cards uh, that come as well. Now, there's more than six in the game. Uh, we've kept the rest to the side. Uh, but at the start of the game, you will randomly shuffle the deck of companion cards and deal out six right here on the side. So this is going to be random as well. Uh, and there's going to be a bit more variability for multiple plays because there are going to be some cards that will come out in certain games. So you will get to see hopefully a few new ones uh, with multiple playthroughs as you go along. So that pretty much uh, sets up the game uh, as it stands. Now, how do you play? Uh, turn structure is pretty simple and straightforward. On your turn, you will basically take the various card you will signal the direction you want to move the various card in. So you will uh, basically say, I'm going to move it to the left or the right, up or down. Uh, and then you will call out the name of a clan or a family. So in this particular case, let's say, for example, uh, I might say that I will move this card to the left uh, and I want to capture the Targaryen cards that we have out there. The way that it will work is you're going to then pick up the card. So uh, pick up the card move it in the direction at the very last card of this family. So in some cases, uh, there may be only one card of that family in that direction. Uh, in this particular case, there is three of them. So I might move this over here to the very last Targaryen card that we have on this side. Uh, pick it up, but I will also be able to pick up all the other cards of the same plan as part of the same move. So these two are also Targaryen cards. I would also be able to pick this up as part of the same action. Uh, and that would basically conclude the main action you're always going to do on every single turn. Now, uh, if you, after you've gotten the card, if you have more cards of a particular clan than your opponent, or even if you tie them, so let's say, for example, if this were a few turns in, uh, my opponent already had three, uh, 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 well, maybe not three, let's say I picked up two, uh, and my opponent had uh, two Targaryen cards, uh, so we've tied, but... I would get to take the banner from them. So if this is the first time any, I've picked up a Targaryen card or anybody's picked up the Targaryen card, I have more than everybody else. I get the banner and I keep it in my tableau. If I tie somebody else who already has the banner, uh, I get to take it from them and I get to keep it in my tableau. So ties go in favor of the person who gets it most recently. So something to keep in mind. Another thing I'll quickly call it at this point is uh, at the bottom right of these cards, you will see that there is a number printed on it. That tells you how many cards of that particular family you have in the game. So this basically tells us that there are five Targaryen cards in the game itself. So with that, you'll take this, you'll put it uh, sort of like, you know, uh, to the side for yourself, take the banner, and that usually will signal the end of your turn. Uh, if at the end of your turn, you've captured the last member of a particular family, then you get to do the companion action. So uh, if let's say, for example, we'll pretend that there are no other Targaryen cards over here in the play uh, uh, area. If this were the last Targaryen card that I would have picked up and there are no other cards left in here, I get to pick one of these companion cards and then do the action of that card itself. And this is going to be an instant ability, uh, more often than not, unless the card tells you otherwise. So some cards may allow you to take uh, another action right away. So for example, if you choose the Melisandre card, basically what it tells you is you get to take another turn immediately. So you'll basically take another turn right away. 
uh, certain other cards might tell you, hey, you can kill this particular character on the play area. So there's a card that kills at stock. Some may tell you that, you know, you pick up a particular card uh, from either the play area or from somebody else's tableau uh, and so on and so forth. So there's uh, these sort of like act, uh, give you a little bit of variability uh, and a special action over the course of the game. So the game will continue in this fashion, going back and forth between the different players. Uh, if you're playing a two player game or around the table, uh, the rules are the same regardless of the player count uh, until you get to a stage where there are no more legal moves left. So in this particular case, after the first one, uh, they would have ended here. Somebody else might have gone up or down, right or left, uh, and did that action. At some stage when you know most of these cards come off, you will be left in an area where you may not have a legal move left, and that will signal the end of the game. At that point, you will count up who has the most... Uh, banners uh, in front of them and then whoever has the most banners uh, obviously wins at that point. Uh, so that's pretty much the rules for the basic game. Uh, there are a couple of variants that the game comes with and we'll quickly talk about what those variants play uh, like. So one of the variants that you can play is a, uh, a team setup if you're playing a four player game. The, it basically works the same way as far as the gameplay is concerned. The only difference is you're not playing in teams, so you and your uh, team member will play on the other side, and then the two other players on the same team will sort of like play across from each other. Uh, the gameplay rules are exactly identical, but at the end of the game, you're basically adding up the banners collected by the team members, and then whoever has the most as a team will win. So that's sort of like the team variant in a four play game, uh, specifically in a four play game. There is another variant, and as we had said earlier on, you have these tokens that the game comes with. Uh, these are sort of like the three-eyed raven variant. So uh, if you're playing with this, this can only be used in either a three-player game or a four-player game. This would not work in a two-player game. Uh, the way that it will work is, and the rules are slightly different based on the play count. So if it's a three-player game, uh, you will hand out one of these. Uh, there are four of them in the game. Uh, hand out one to each one of the players. The fourth one obviously is not used. Uh, a three-player game with this variant is uh, obviously competitive between all the three players. What this basically does is if you're playing with this over the course of the game, uh, there can be no conversations around the table. So nobody's going to be able to talk to one another or say, I might be looking to do this or I might be looking to do that uh, uh, in any scenario at all. In order for you to be able to talk, you need to spend one of these. So the way that it will work is, uh, obviously the game's gonna continue, nobody's talking to one another. At any point, if you want to talk to any one of your opponents in a three player game, you will spend one of these. Uh, whoever you wanna talk to, you will uh, select them. Uh, the two of you will go to sort of like, you know, a, a private secluded area, uh, have a conversation amongst yourselves, whatever you may wanna talk about in terms of strategy or whatnot. Uh, and then come back and then play accordingly. So it's sort of like a one-off thing that you can do. And that is the only time you would be able to talk to an opponent. If you use these tokens in a four play game, uh, it does the same thing, but slightly different. Uh, so in a four play game, again, you cannot talk to one another uh, if you're using this variant. Uh, but when you, each one of the four players will get one of these tokens. Uh, but when you spend the token, you do not talk to your opponent, but rather you talk to your team member. Uh, so the way that it will work is uh, you make it, you know, you spend one of these, you and your team member go to a, a private, uh, uh, sort of like secluded uh, part of the room or out of the room or, you know, whatever. Uh, talk to one another, strategize in terms of what you may or may not want to do. And then you come back to the table and then the game continues. And again, uh, these would be sort of like a one-off thing that you can use over the course of the game. So those are the variants that the game comes with as well. Uh, and as I said, uh, for regardless of the rules that you're playing with, the victory condition is determined by these banners. So whoever has the most banners at the end of the game wins. A uh, couple of other minor nuances around the rules uh, that I just want to cover off as well. Uh, so we spoke about how if you, when you, whenever you collect a character card, you're tied with uh, another player around the table, you do get the banner uh, from them. So ties are in your favor. Uh, there might be instances where you're using one of the companion actions and you either kill a character or you take a character from somebody else and that rebalances the number of characters that are uh, in different players' tableau. Uh, in that particular case, whoever used the companion's action is the player who gets to choose uh, who uh, basically wins the tie in that particular case. So it may not always necessarily be the last player uh, uh, to do it. So keep that in mind. That's the one nuance. But other than that, Pretty easy, uh, uh, light game uh, that plays quite fast. Uh, and those are pretty much the rules.